Hello friends, in this lecture we are going to perform the meshing. So first of all, let's go to ANSYS and then pick up this static structure. Now we are going to import a geometry inside this. So I am taking the default material, go to geometry and then import. In your project file, go to the folder of meshing and let's say Initially, I am going to insert a very simple type of object. So I will select plate with hole and click open. Now go to model and then edit. So here we can see the plate with a hole. So now we are going to do the meshing of this plate with a hole. But first of all, we need to select the proper units. So I will go to home tab, go to units. And I am selecting the metric units. So it is millimeter. So here we can also see the scale of meshing. Right now the scale is 0 to 80. It means the dimension of this object is somewhere between this specified range. Now let's do the meshing. So I will go to the folder. So I will go to this mesh. Right click and then we need to generate the mesh. So click on generate and you can see ANSYS generate a default mesh. Now inside this mesh we can change all the settings. Now in ANSYS to change the settings we have two options. One is called global mesh settings or global mesh control and the second is called local mesh control. So in case of global mesh control we are going to use all these options that are given here. So click on this mesh and below this another detail window will open. Now inside this window we have multiple options to change the meshing. So all these options are under the global mesh control. And if you want to use the local mesh control I can make a right click onto this mesh click on insert and we can see multiple options inside this meshing. These all options are called local mesh control. So initially we are going to start with this global mesh control and later on we will use the local mesh control. All these options we can also find here. Go to this mesh and these are all the similar options we can find just like in the global and local mesh control. So now Basically what we do in ANSYS, we generate a default mesh and after seeing that default mesh, we are going to change this meshing according to our requirement. Now let's say I want to change some settings in, into this mesh. So to do this, I will click on this mesh and then go to this details option. In this details option, first option it is showing display style. So is this display style is by default use geometry settings. We can also display it with respect to element quality, aspect ratio, Jacobian etc. So these are all the different types of element quality. And we are going to learn about this element quality in a separate lecture. So by default I am taking this as a use geometry settings. After that we can see physics preference. So in physics preference we need to specify for what purpose we are going to use this meshing. The first is mechanical and nonlinear mechanical. These are all the structural analysis. Then we have electromagnetics, CFD, explicit and hydrodynamics. By default it is going to take mechanical and when we are solving the nonlinear problem we need to select the nonlinear mechanical. So I am selecting mechanical and then we have element order. In the element order we have three options program controlled, linear and quadratic. So in case of quadratic element we also have node at the midpoint. Okay so by default it is going to take linear. In case of quadratic we have extra node at the midpoint. Whenever we are going to perform the tetra element, it is going to create the quadratic element. But in case of simple element like this is a hex element, by default it is program controlled and it will take the linear. So let's say I am taking this as program controlled. 
After that we have important term that is called the element size and here we can see it is showing default. So it means ANSYS has taken a default size and it has done the meshing. But we can also change this element size depending on the requirement. And then we have some more control like sizing, quality, inflation. So we are going to learn about them one by one. Now let's say I want to change the element size. So in the element size click on this insert the value let's say this is 5 okay after that we need to update the mesh so I can click on this update mesh or I can make a right click onto this mesh I can select update or generate mesh click on update mesh and now it is going to update the mesh with respect to this element size of 5 now, so now you can see all the element size out of 5 so let's say I'm going to reduce this element size. So let's say I'm taking three and then again, I'm going to update this meshing. So whenever we reduce the element size, it is going to create a much finer mesh. So we can see we have a finer mesh. Similarly, we can increase or decrease this element size according to our requirement. So here in case of 3D, we can use two types of element that is tetra element and hex element. Since this is a simple type of object by default the software takes the hex element. Now if we want to generate the tetra element into this to generate the tetra element or to change the type of element I will go to mesh right click insert and click on method. Here we need to select the geometry so make sure this body is selected click on this complete body and apply in the method i will select tetrahedron and all the other settings i am taking as default then mesh and then update this so here we can see this time it has created a tetra element now we can also once again change the element size so let's say this is one and then update the mesh so when we use the smaller element size it is going to take some time to generate the mesh because it is going to create higher number of element so here we can see we have a very fine mesh so if we go to the statistics we can see the number of nodes and number of elements here we need to understand how to select a proper element size what element size is good for our analysis now to understand this the proper element size we need to understand that is called the mesh convergence or the meshing accuracy so let's say i have this circle and i want to create the mesh of the circle initially i am going to use a triangle so i am going to fit a triangle inside this circle so you can see this area which is not covered that this area is called the error. Now to improve the mesh accuracy I want to select an element which cover the most of the area. So here we can see this time I am going to select the four lines. Also I am going to select quad element. So you see this time the error area is reducing. Similarly when I increase this six element or the six line we can see this area is reducing. So it means whenever I increase the density of the element or we can say when I reduce the length of the element. So you see in case of triangle the length of element is like this in quadrilateral it is like this here it is this. So it means the length of the element is decreasing and with smaller length it is going to reduce the error it means smaller length means we are going to get a good mesh accuracy so general rule is smaller the element size we get a much better result but again problem is that when we reduce the elements element size it is going to create a higher number of nodes so it is going to increase the solution time so 
in case of smaller element size the solution time is increased now to understand this problem let's say i have this fillet part here so here we have a fillet so initially i am going to select two elements here so here we can see it has covered the area like this now i am going to increase the element density here i have used four element eight element and 16 element so when i use the 16 element we can see the element density is much higher and it is capturing the area in in a much better way so right now here we can see when we use the two element there is some surface that is showing it means this surface is basically the error but when i increase the number of element this error is decreasing so basically we use something that is called the mesh convergence so what we do to get a optimum element size we use the mesh convergence so initially we take a larger mesh size or we can say we use a lesser number of lines so initially like this so we select a smaller element initially we select a large element and we perform the analysis and then we keep on increasing the number of lines so here we can see number of lines are increasing it means the element size is decreasing so after some time we get an accurate result so here we can see on the right side we have result so initially the result is not accurate after that we increase the element number of element we get a accurate result and we come and we keep on reducing the element size and here after some time we can see we get the accurate result so we keep on reducing the element size and we get a accurate result so this is called this line this and the line is called the converging lines now to run the analysis at a optimum time we take the element size at this point so basically we draw this and hence we select the element size from this mesh convergence chart 